Hi, and welcome to UTS Library's video introducing you to EndNote 20 for PC. In this class, we'll show you where you can download EndNote 20 from the library website, show you the layout of the new software, show you how to put references into EndNote 20, and of course, show you how to take those references and place them into Microsoft Word. And maybe we'll touch on some other things too. Um, but let's get cracking. So first thing I'm going to do is share my screen with you. And we shall begin at the library website. So here's the new library website. Um, if you would like to download EndNote, you are able to do this for free by the library website if you're a UTS student. So let me just show you how to do that. First, you go to the library website, which is lib.uts.edu.au. Then you mouse over the referencing tab here at the top of screen and choose EndNote. Scroll down until you see this link that says download EndNote for Windows and click. You'll be taken to this page, which has some older versions of EndNote, but also the most recent version, which is EndNote 20. So click on that. And then click on this uh, zipped download package for EndNote 20. When you do that, it will go down to your downloads folder, uh, at which time you actually have to unzip it before it will be able to be installed. So um, use an unzip program on your computer. Um, and then run that install file and click it through to the end. And then you'll have EndNote on your computer. So uh, when it is installed and you load it up, it will look a little something like this. Let me just get rid of all of my other software here for a second. I don't want this stuff open. Okay, so um, for at this point, you can open an existing library if you'd like to. So if you were using previous versions of EndNote, um, you could open one of those older libraries using EndNote 20. It will make a slightly different file type out of your old library, but after that will work fine. Or you can create a new library from scratch. So let's try that. I'm going to call this new library Tuesday because it's a Tuesday. You would probably be able to come up with a better name for your library. Uh, perhaps something to do with your research or your area of study. Okay, let me just take you through um, the layout of EndNote 20. So the first thing you'll notice is that I could actually maximize that screen to let it take up the entirety of screen, which is probably a good idea. Now let's uh, show you the three major elements of the EndNote layout. On the left here, you have um, a filing system for all of the references that you create. Uh, that filing system includes groups, which basically allow you to um, you know, make smaller sub areas of references within your uh, overall library. Groups are useful because it's usually good practice not to have many libraries, but instead have one large library for all of your referencing needs, and then to divide that into groups. Um, although that, you know, that is up to you. You can have lots of libraries if you want to. Um, beneath groups, you'll find a find full text function, which is useful, but uh, not really within the purview of this short introductory class. So we might cover that in a subsequent uh, more extended and more advanced video. Then we have an online search function. And again, this doesn't really need to be covered in an introductory video. Although for folks doing um, medical research using systematic reviews, then potentially, I guess the PubMed search option within that may or may not be useful, uh, simply because it does allow you to download many, many records at once. However, I can collapse the things that I don't want to show today if, uh, by clicking on that little carrot, if you like. So that's just one thing to bear in mind when you can open and close these little menus here. In the middle is where the references go. You can uh, download them from off the internet if the uh, website that you're using is compatible with EndNote. Uh, compatible websites include the library catalog, Google Scholar, and other academic databases. Uh, however, for things like websites and such, you'll probably have to key the information for those websites in yourself. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that as well within this class. On the right hand side here is a preview pane, which if you have a reference installed, will show you all the fields that the reference is using. It will show you a 
preview of what that reference might look like according to your favorite referencing style. And if you had a PDF attachment, it could also let you open and view that attachment. However, we can't really do that until we have some references. So we'll get a reference first. Those of you who have used EndNote previously will note that this area on the left here looks quite similar to previous versions of EndNote. And this area, well, and this area looks a little bit different. For one, this search function here, uh, which is actually quite similar to um, the search function in previous EndNotes, is actually always there. Whereas in previous versions of EndNote, it was a toggle that you could turn on and off. Uh, another difference from the old older versions of EndNote is that all of these icons that used to live above these main three windows have gone and been replaced by a much smaller array of icons down here. These icons are add a new reference, which we'll use later. Share a group, which would allow you to share a group of references with a colleague. Um, this is probably better kept for a more advanced video, so we won't touch on that today. There's export references. This wouldn't be part of your day-to-day -day workflow too often, but would be useful if you wanted to move references from EndNote to a different um, referencing software, potentially, like a Mendeley or a RefWorks. Um, then we have search the web for full text documents. So this is similar to this find full text function. Again, we will show that perhaps in another video. And then finally, we have create a web of science citation report for your references which um, is again, not really within the scope of this video, so we won't worry about that. Another difference um, from between EndNote 20 and older versions of EndNote is that this preview window now always lives on the right. As a default in previous versions of EndNote, it lived there too, but you did have a view a display um, option that allowed you to move the, um, the preview window around. You could have it at the bottom of the screen. You could also control the tabs within the um, preview window. There are actually less tabs than there used to be. There used to be three, now there's two. Um, and the sort of navigation within that preview window is a bit simplified, but uh, it's easier to explain all of these things when we actually have a reference. So we'll get a reference very soon. Before we do that, I also thought we might add a reference style to um, EndNote because many students at UTS use Harvard UTS or the APA 7th style uh, or even AGLC. All of these styles can be downloaded from the library website. Um, there is, I believe, an APA 7th style that exists as a default within EndNote, but uh, the library has sort of tweaked and improved that style ever so slightly. So I'll show you how to download that in case you're curious. So if I just go back to the library website, and mouse over referencing and then hit EndNote again. Scroll down, you'll see um, these style files for EndNote. So this is the APA 7 style as created by UTS library. If you click on this link, it will go to your downloads folder. Here we go. And when you click on it, it will open in EndNote. All of the information on this page basically tells EndNote how to create references within, with this style. Um, you don't really need to know about all of these rules if you're an average everyday user of EndNote. All you need to know is how to save this style so that it will then become available within the table of styles in EndNote. So to do that, you just choose File, Save As. It may come with extraneous information here saying, you know, copy or numbers. You can remove those if you don't need them and just keep it simple. APA 7th UTS is probably good because it will tell it apart from the APA 7th that comes with EndNote. So I'll use that name and I'll press save. I already have this style, but I'll replace it just for argument's sake. And then I'm going to shut this window down. This won't shut EndNote down, it will just shut down that window. So you'll notice that EndNote here is still um, loaded. Now, uh, what I need to do, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm still getting to grips with EndNote 20 a little bit, is to add a reference now. And when I add a reference, I will then be able to select APA 7 as my favorite style using this preview window. So let me return to the library website once more. This time we won't be using the EndNote uh, page, we'll just be using the library catalog to find a book. 
I'm going to search for the book called Sapiens. Um, bearing in mind that not just books live in this uh, search engine, this library catalog, you can find articles in here, newspaper articles, videos, theses, conference papers, lots of different things. But I will search for Sapiens. Because there's so many things in EndNote, the book Sapiens may be um, jogged away from the very top of the list by some other things, including a journal of the same name and a couple of other articles but if I scroll down to number five, then I find the book that I wanted, uh, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. So to send this reference to EndNote, one method you can use is to click on the name of the book or article in question, and then use this icon from within the page that opens next, export RIS. RIS is a file type that is compatible with EndNote and that will take all of this information, who wrote the book, uh, what it's called, when it was published, and make it uh, usable in a form to EndNote. So if I click on this export RIS button, something will go to my downloads. Oh, first thing I need to do actually, after having pressed that is press this download button. And then something will go to my downloads, which I can then open by just clicking on it in my downloads folder. Aha, and now we have a reference. So. If I click on this reference, you'll notice that this right hand area, the preview area will change. Okay. So there are two main elements to this preview section. There's edit and there's summary. Edit is useful if you would like to add your own notes around the work, uh, or if you would like to tidy up the reference in some way. So if you wanted to um, make your own little annotations about uh, the work, for whatever reason, I will use this for this assignment or I downloaded this on this day. I use these keywords to find this, whatever is useful to you. You can put them in a field like research notes. Or uh, you can also use this area to tidy up the reference if it's not perfect. Now, one of the things I note about this is that the author has been written twice. So perhaps um, I could just remove that. So you just highlight the text and remove it. Yeah. Let me save that change. This button is new it's to um, the preview window, a little save button. Previously, when you wanted to sort of confirm changes you made in EndNote, you clicked outside of this window and then it would ask you to save, which is a bit odd. But this is a bit more logical. So that's edit mode. We might need to return here to tidy this up a bit more, but first thing I want to do is look at how this reference might appear in the APA 7 style so that I can see how close it is to how that style might um, represent this book and how good the reference is, basically. So to do that, I need to click on this other tab in here saying summary. Now, summary is compiled of two windows that are adjustable. So if I use this little slider here, you can see I can pull this down. And what I'll see is sort of some information about the book, basically similar to what the edit mode is, but um, a bit more abbreviated. Then, you will see down here this uh, preview of the reference according to the style. Now, because I've been using EndNote 20 already, EndNote, sorry, APA 7th is already selected as my favourite style. But when you first arrive at this window, it will probably have a default style like annotated there. But selecting APA 7th as your favourite style now, it would be easy so long as you've already completed the steps we showed before where you download it from the website and then save it to EndNote. If you've already done those things, within this little table of styles uh, on the right here, you can select another style. EndNote comes pre-built with 500 different referencing styles, a lot of which are the styles belonging to different journals that you might want to publish in. But uh, also in here are various versions of APA. Um, so APA 7th, uh, we have many versions of them that we're using here in the library as we play around, but the one we just created or downloaded today was APA 7th UTS. So that is there in that list. Um, I will hit that and press choose. And now it becomes my favorite style. And you can see it also gives us a preview of what this book would look like in a reference list. Let me just have a quick look. Again, it, it helps to know something about the style you're going to be working with before you start using EndNote, because if you're not aware of what the reference should look like, then you'll have a hard time coaxing EndNote to reflect that sort of template for you. 
However, this is pretty good. We have authors here with the surname and their first initials separated by commas and an ampersand um, between the second and the final author, which is all fine. Then we have the year in, in parentheses. Uh, then we have the title in italics. This is all great. Then we have this information about an edition in brackets, and then we have the publisher. So almost all of these elements are fine. The only thing I would probably correct is the, this edition information, because usually this edition information is only there to list things like second edition, third edition. The first edition or some sort of boutique, um, you know, version like a Harper perennial edition usually wouldn't need to be in your reference. So, and especially not a first edition generally. So if I'd like, I can remove this information from the reference by going back to edit. And then I need to scroll down until I see where this information is stored, which is in addition. And again, you just delete it and save. Now, if I go back to the summary, it's not there anymore, which is nice. Okay, so what I might do now is just um, show you how to get a journal article from out of a library database. And when I do that, I can also show you this other feature that exists in the preview window, which allows you to attach a PDF to a reference. So this is something that also looks a little bit different in uh, EndNote 20 to previous editions. Um, this button wasn't always there, but I think you'll find it's a helpful little thing to have. Okay, so before we began today, I opened up Science Direct, which is a library database that has lots of full text PDFs in it. And I thought I would continue my sort of um, uh, search for various strains of humanity. We've already looked for Homo sapiens. So this time I might look for Homo ergaster. And maybe I'll write something about tool making. Or something. Okay. So here we have a couple of articles, the social er organization of Homo ergaster and a comparison of inverse dynamics sort of an analysis of the skeletons of Homo ergaster to see how the uh, evolution towards walking on two feet was going. Neither of which may be as perfect an article about tool making as I'd like, but that's by the by. Let's just pretend these are the articles we'd like. So in this database, what you can do is select an article like that with this little checkbox and uh, you're free to select more than one. Different databases have different limits on how many articles you can select at one time uh, and slightly different ways in which to get these references into EndNote. But the method we're gonna show you here is pretty familiar um, to other databases too. A lot of the time you select the articles over here and then you use this button up here, export, to send the articles to EndNote. So I'm gonna do that, press this little link and then the database, database will usually give you the option either to export to RIS in the same way that the catalog did, the library catalog, or export to EndNote. But either way, um, the process should work similarly after you make this selection. So I'm gonna press export to RIS. Something will probably appear in my downloads folder. And here it is, I'll just click on that. So now we have two references that we brought down at the same time. And if I click on them, I can have a quick look at how they appear. Usually journal articles are of pretty good quality um, and you may not need to tidy them up as much as some other things. So we have all these authors, the name of the paper, the journal that published it, the volume and issue number, the pages and the DOI, that looks nice. For the other article, we have authors, year, title of paper, title of journal, volume number, page number and DOI also nice. Okay, so they look fine. What I'll do now is just show you how to attach a PDF to one of these, maybe the Willems. Here we go. So if I go back to the database, uh, here's the Willems paper. I'll download the PDF. You have to download the paper before you can attach it to the referencing EndNote generally. There is another thing that lives within EndNote called EndNote Click, which sort of does some of these things as well, but we'll cover that in another video perhaps later as well. We'll just do it the simple way today. So here is the, uh, the PDF itself. I'll download it to my computer. ScienceDirect creates these long serial number type names for PDFs, but um, I could call it something else. In fact, here is one I created earlier, Willems Ergaster. Perhaps I'll call it that, which of course will make me overwrite this PDF, but that's okay. 
So it's usually a good idea to give your PDF some sort of meaningful name in case you need to find them again. There it is, Willem's Ergaster. Okay, so if I go over to here, um, what I can now do is use this attach file option, which lives in summary, to bring the PDF into EndNote as well. So what this means is, when I'm using EndNote in the future, I'll have the references and I can put them into my writing. But if I want to go back and consult the actual article, I can do that from here as well, which makes for a nice workflow. So if I want to attach the file, I press this little button, select my PDF and press open. And now it appears here. So this presentation of the PDF in this summary mode up here is a little bit different too. There used to be a third tab basically that would handle the PDF in this preview area in previous versions of EndNote, but now it's um, up over the summary and I think that's a, an improvement really. It's one less thing to have to click on. If I'd like to read the PDF, I've got a couple of options. I can use this drop down and just use open, or I can even open it in Adobe Acrobat, which is a new um, functionality EndNote 20 provides that you might find useful. Just to keep it simple today, I'll just press open, which uses a PDF viewer that's built into EndNote. And here's the PDF um, in all its glory. Uh, there's a couple of little uh, sort of functional, functional tools uh, within this PDF viewer in EndNote. You've got a search PDF function, a note making function, and also a print function. They're the main ones. There's probably others too. So that's nice. Another cool feature of EndNote that I'll just quickly demo, and this is probably a bit more advanced as well, but can be useful if you have many attachments and you want to find the reference that they live in. Uh, well, you might want to find a particular quote or some particular text within a particular PDF that you might have attached to a reference in EndNote. You can actually search EndNote for the words in the PDF. Um, as well as locate references by searching for words that are actually in the reference. So in, to do that, you can use this um, search function here, which unlike version, previous versions of EndNote, which uh, sort of had the search function as a toggle that could be turned on or off. This is always active in EndNote 20. So you could write um, Sapien, for example, and these articles would disappear and our Sapien's book from before, before would reappear. Oh, this little save thing is just asking if I want to confirm adding the PDF and I'll say yes. So having a look for Sapien, um, or oh, maybe it's, oh, let's try again. Um, yes, okay, that's what it does. So I was looking in my imported references at first, that's what was happening. I was looking for Sapien, but I was looking for it here and it didn't appear in either of these references. So if I go back up to all references and choose Sapien, it will highlight um, the ones that match it. So I assume somewhere in here, this has the word homo sapien in it as well. But that can actually match in the title. So I guess that's why it's going orange. If there were words in the PDF and you wanted to search for them, you can do that uh, going by going into advanced search. So that's simple search, this is advanced search. Then you would use this drop down to select uh, words within the PDF. And you can also expand your search to look basically anywhere, including the notes you might make in the PDF. Okay, so I'll just unkey that. So where are we up to now? Okay, so basically now I just need to um, show you one or two more little things about how to get a reference into EndNote and then we'll make a group and then we'll finish with some word. So uh, in addition to library databases and the library catalog, Google Scholar is obviously a very popular research tool that people use. I'm just going to show you one trick about using this with EndNote that might seem a bit counterintuitive, but should be helpful to you. So um, let's just have a look for Homo Ergaster again. So, um, oh, there's the same one we saw before. Uh, here's a new one. Okay. So basically, if you want to send a reference from Google Scholar, you press these little site button this little site button beneath the reference. And then you go down here. Now, you've got these options for EndNote and RefMan. EndNote will work, but RefMan seems to work better. Uh, RefMan actually creates an RIS file, which is the same kind of file we've been using in our other databases. 
EndNote is a bespoke file type that also works, but tends to not have as high quality data and sometimes puts the data in the wrong place in EndNote. So use RefMan if you're going to be using Google Scholar. It seems to be the, the easiest way to do it. So there you go. Let's have a quick look at that reference. Go to the summary. Yeah, so I mean, even this one is probably missing a little bit of information about um, the volume and issue number that could be added. To do that, you would come in here and you would start to add numbers in here. If it had a freely available DOI or URL, you would add that in too. Uh, if not, um, page numbers would be good and volume and issue number if possible. So that's just one thing to bear in mind. Sometimes the actual database that lives behind Google Scholar will give you better quality downloads records than Google Scholar itself. Okay, so um, now I will make a reference by hand. Uh, all of the things we've seen today are sort of academic products that give you access to books and articles, but for things like websites, uh, there's usually no export function available. So you have to key these things in yourself. So to do that, we create a blank form and then we just write in information about a website. This button will give us the blank form, add new reference. If we were entering a website, we would want to choose the appropriate reference type and for a website, it's web page. I'll just move my little zoom command bar there away. So if I go down to the bottom here, it's a long list, there's web page. So I'll just bring up a, a dummy web page that I always use in these situations called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. I choose this page because um, it's relatively easy to create a citation for. It doesn't really have anything to do with our um, other searches, except for the fact that this affects Homo sapiens, but it makes for an easy thing to reference. So basically, again, it helps to know about the APA 7th referencing style. And if you did, you would know that there's certain elements about this web page we need to describe in our reference. One would be we'd need the URL. So I might just copy that before we go any further and go back to EndNote. And right at the bottom of this uh, blank for web page, you, there will be a URL field and we can paste that in. We won't shut that yet. We'll just flip back over to the website. The other thing we need is the name of the website, which is in EndNote speak, uh, analogous to the publisher. Simply psychology. Okay. So uh, I would have to find the right field to put this in, publisher. Simply psychology. We do actually have a document that we created that tells you for all the different reference types which fields to enter all that information into. It currently doesn't have a home on our new library website, but it will again soon. So just keep an eye on the EndNote page in uh, the library website. And as soon as those kinds of documents are available, there'll be um, a path to them from the EndNote page and the new library website. Okay, so we've got a publisher and a URL. We've got the name of the page itself, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. I'll cut that and paste it and see how, if that works. That would be the title in this case. Um, I'm not sure whether you need to capitalize all these letters, but generally in a title, a web page title in AK7, you don't capitalize all the words. So I might just decapitalize them and hope I'm not getting it wrong. The uh, final two things we need, um, at the very least, would be the author and the year. So we have here uh, the fact that it's written in 2020. I'll go and pop, 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 pop that over here in the year. And it's by Saul McLeod. So this is the only thing about EndNote that uh, sort of you really need to drum into your mind before you start entering references yourself. And this is the way we write authors down. Now you can just write them like this. Be careful to spell everything correctly because EndNote won't be able to check your spelling. You can enter them like that, that's fine. You can also enter them like this, which is a lot of the time the way names will come down from the internet. You could write like that. You could equally just write it like that. Uh, some styles will want the entire first name, but most won't. So if you wrote Saul McLeod and you were in the APA 7 style, it would shorten that name to S anyway. Now we probably don't want both of these, um, so I'll just delete one of them. Now the final consideration when entering in an author in 
manual in to EndNote is if you have a corporate author. So it could be General Motors or the Department of Finance. In these cases, you don't really want to um, write it like that just by itself because um, in the same way that EndNote will take Saul McLeod and turn it into McLeod, S, it will turn this into Motors, G. So to stop it doing that, place a comma at the end uh, of your corporate author and it will stop it getting clicked around. Now, of course, we don't really want um, General Motors as an author here, so I'll just take that away. Oh, as a final uh, thing, though, it is important if you've got more than one author to enter each author on a new line. So don't be uh, writing General Motors up here. That won't work. It'll just make for one very strange name. Okay. Um, you know, if you want to be super accurate and you can also actually enter in the last updated date in APA 7 for the day and the month of the uh, creation of the web page. Not a deal breaker, but I mean, just to show you that it would work, I'll put it in here, December 29. Okay, and then I'm going to press save. All my information in there is nice now. And then I'll just shut this little window down. So now here we have Saul McLeod, 2020, December 29. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs from Simply Psychology and the URL. Lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to go up here and click on all references so I can see everything I've made today. What I might just do is grab um, a reference and pop it into um, a group. So this is kind of interesting. So if I make a group by clicking, right clicking on my groups and then choose group, I could have a group for Homo sapiens, wise man in Latin. Then I guess what I could do is go up here and look for the word sapien. And look at that, both of these apparently have something to do with Homo sapiens. So I could go and select them by going shift click, uh, control A, just clicking on them, you know, one at a time. And then you can drag them over into the group and let them go. So there you go. And if I wanted to make another one, perhaps, for uh, Homo ergaster, I could do the same thing. I could go over here and write ergaster. And there's all three of them uh, apparently apply to Homo ergaster. Now, you might end up with one reference in more than one group, but that's perfectly fine. Um, so you could go and select all of those and drag them over. You could also right click once you've selected the ones you like and then do add references to and choose Homo Ergast. So that's a nice way to show you groups and also the search function at the same time. And then you have uh, two references down there and three references up there. When you click on them, you see them. That's what groups are for. Okay. Now I'm going to put a couple of references into Word for you. So let me load Word, bring it up here. Oops, um, let's start a blank document here. And uh, down here we have, well, up here we have the EndNote toolbar. It's a, just an interesting consideration to bear in mind that um, the way EndNote 20 works, you need to have EndNote 20 open before you open Word or you may not see the EndNote 20 toolbar. So if you don't see the EndNote 20 toolbar, um, shut down Word, uh, open EndNote and then open Word again. If you're still having problems, um, you might be able to go and find it using um, file, options, add-ins, and to sort of find it in this list and add it that way. But I'm not going to go into that in great detail. If you can't find it, uh, let the library know and we'll show you how to do that at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a couple of simple things here about the EndNote toolbar. The first is being able to find a reference to place it into your work. So if I go up here and much like I had before, write Ergaster, we'll see three references that have that word in that reference somewhere. I could select one at this point and insert it. I could even select using shift or something, two references at once and insert them. So sometimes in especially scientific writing, you might want to quote more than one person for a particular point. Uh, you can do that in the one set of parentheses in APA 7th in this way. And you'll see that when you do that, um, it, it creates this in-text citation separated by semicolon and creates two reference list entries down here. 
Now our Quaternary International References needs a bit of working on, um, but that's by the by, I guess, today. If we had also uh, wanted to create a reference in a slightly different way, maybe we said Willem's, you know, quote something, and now we want to insert the Willem's reference. We could, oh, Willem's being the author of one of these papers that I downloaded. I could go up here and I could write Willem's, he's already up on that screen, but um, go up and look for that name, find the reference that way and insert it. Now, um, because we've already used the name of an author, and technically it's Williams and Van Shake, but um, you know, again, that's a bit by the by. I'll still do it correctly, just to be nice to the authors. Okay, Williams and Van Shake say, quote, now we don't need these authors in the in-text reference because we've created what's called a narrative citation. So if we'd like to, we can actually keep the citation, but take the authors out. Uh, to do that, you click on the citation and then you go up to edit and manage citations. And then you can use this little drop down to exclude the author. And then press OK. And so it'll still be in your reference list. You'll still get the year, but the names have been removed. Now, often when we, almost all the time, when we quote, and the quote comes from a page within a printed document, you would want to give the page number of that quote. Again, we can use edit and manage citations for this. So if our quote came from page seven, we would go up here to edit and manage citations and use this page field to write in the, the page that the quote came from and press OK. The reason we don't go in here and just write it ourselves is because EndNote doesn't like that very much and we'll get rid of it again. So you have to use this edit and manage citation button. Equally, if you had found like in the course of your writing that you're no longer talking about the work of Pearson anymore and you want to remove Pearson from the syntax reference, you can't just easily go in there and delete it all. But you can remove it in a clever way using EndNote. And this way is actually the best way to remove any in-text citation from EndNote because uh, it will do so without any little bit of this formatting. This grey text indicates formatting. When you use edit and manage citations to remove a citation, none of that formatting will be left behind because sometimes if the formatting is left behind, it will cause errors in your document later on that are quite nasty and hard to fix. So say I just wanted to remove Pearson from this in-text reference. I would click on edit and manage citations, go up to Pearson, and then use this little download to sorry, this little down arrow to choose remove citation and then do okay. And there you go. Everything flows on from that really. That workflow will do you well. Although for one other little thing, say for um, you know a reference you might've changed, say you add the volume number uh, nine to Williams, if I go to here and it was necessary to add in a volume number or an issue number I should say of nine to this and you press save. To affect this change in your document, you just go over here and press this final button we'll touch on today, which is update citations and bibliography, and it will affect this little area down there. You can see it updates everything. Okay, now that's more or less it for this class. Um, I might just uh, cover two things really, really quickly, just as an addition. Um, one of which is if you just want to make a plain text version of a reference list and not use the insert citation function, you can do that. So you can go and grab a whole bunch of references and select them in EndNote, right click and choose copy formatted. And then it will make a reference list according to whatever your favorite style is in EndNote uh, and more particularly, but no, actually in EndNote, but yes, it will probably reflect also the style that's in Word. So, Select the references, right click and choose copy formatted and then just paste. And you'll find that this is plain text. So if I wanted to change anything here, I could, uh, it wouldn't stop me. So it's not going to reverse any of that work. Whereas if it would have been entered by EndNote up here, uh, I won't be able to make those changes. If as a final, final thing to mention before I leave a word, you did want to, um, you did have an EndNote created reference list and you wanted to make little changes to it. 
You can do that by choosing Convert Citations and Bibliography and then making a plain text version of this document. When you do that, you'll create a different document to the EndNote coded one, but one where you all of the writing in it is plain text as if you'd written it yourself and you can change it however much you like. And this can be good if you're having trouble getting EndNote to output the references exactly as you like to some sort of boutique strange reference. So this gives you perfect control over the way things look. But once it's in plain text, it can't become an EndNote uh, document again. So that's just a word of warning. However, you will have uh, your plain text file separate to your EndNote one, so you won't lose your work. Okay, so just to finish up, um, I thought I would just indicate a way of getting uh, help from the library website. Again, more references, uh, more resources about EndNote will be following on this website shortly, I would imagine. But uh, until then, you can always chat with us. Most of our librarians on the library chat are familiar with EndNote. Or if you've got a like, tricky question um, and you want some specialist attention, use this contact us form. Go down here, you can enter in a question via this form, or if you'd like to sit down with a librarian, if you're a researcher or if you're staff, to learn a bit more about EndNote or troubleshoot some problems, you can always use this library consultation form as well um, to talk about EndNote and research more generally. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing for a mo and uh, bid you good, good day, uh, good luck with your travels with EndNote and um, I'll see you again in the future.